This is DIY Hi-Fi Life. On this episode, we dampen the motor housing of the HW19 and we replace the springs for the HW19 plinth. Today on DIY Hi-Fi Life. Hello again and welcome back. I'm Chris Barker for DIY Hi-Fi Life and in this continuing series we're pursuing the HW19 upgrade and we're now well into uh, the various upgrades that we're going to perform and today we're going to go ahead and attack um, the vibration that we're hearing on the top of the HW19 motor housing and then we're going to follow that up by uh, looking at the springs that are in the HW19 and uh, replace those with some new modern up-to-date materials for support Supporting the plinth. So uh, I thank you for uh, watching this video and for subscribing and liking if possible. And of course all the information about various things I talk about in this video can be found uh, down below in the more information area. And there's also some links to some uh, free music, uh, free uh, offers for trials of uh, streaming music, and other things that you uh, might want to take advantage of and that would help this channel out. So uh, please take a look at that. So in today's episode, uh, we'll have a, sh a series of uh, short videos on uh, two things today. First, we're going to go ahead and uh, look at the um, top of the motor housing where we tested in the last episode and found that there was some noise and vibration uh, where the motor is mounted and uh, see if we can do something about that. Now in our testing before, we did uh, note that really none of that vibration is leaking out into the rest of the uh, turntable as far as I can tell. Uh, we used a mechanics stethoscope to go around and listen to various points of the frame away from the motor and I heard nothing audibly. I also uh, used a um, accelerometer built into my cell phone uh, using the iDynamics app and tested uh, that way as well so we could get a real um, quantitative analysis of uh, any vibration. And so uh, what we're going to do today is once we apply um, our solution for dampening the top of the motor housing, I'll go ahead and remeasure with that iDynamics app and see if uh, we notice any uh, change. And we'll also use the mechanics stethoscope as well to do an auditory uh, uh, test to see what we uh, see there. So uh, watch for that in a moment. Also, we'll follow up then with um, working uh, on how to replace the springs that come with the HW19. The springs look like this and they have a top and a bottom piece of plastic uh, as well and sit in cutouts in the uh, plinth we'll see in a moment. Um, I think this is an area where one can be fairly creative. I think springs have become somewhat um, outdated uh, over the time. Uh, I think people have decided that they're not the uh, way to go anymore and so newer materials have come along and people have used those to uh, replace the springs. So um, uh, here I am applying something called Noiko. Uh, it's a mastic uh, metal foil material as you see and I cut out a template for the top of the VPI HW19 motor housing. I've used this material before. It's uh, typically used in automotive sound uh, dampening, deadening applications. I think it has relevance here and you can see I'm uh, carefully uh, getting it pushed down onto the top. Okay, here is the iDynamics app and the results of uh, the dampening of the motor housing. And I'm pleased to say that a 0.05 reduction in measured vibration was found. Okay, this is a test of the mechanic stethoscope after applying the um, vibration dampening material to the top of the VPI HW19. 
So right now the motor is off and I hear nothing. So I'm going to go ahead and turn the motor on and see what I hear. I still hear um, a hum when in direct contact, but it seems a bit more muted. And in some places I'm not hearing any hum at all, which was not the case before. I remember out here in the extremities, I was hearing hum. I'm still hearing some hum, but again, it seems more muted very very low at this point so i think this material is having some effect not absolutely killing it but i think it's worthwhile we'll have to look at the uh the phone application test to see if it's quantifiable and the rest of the uh frame is dead quiet, not, not, not hearing any vibration. So I think this was a good I'm hearing absolutely no vibration at these locations. I think this was a success. All right, now we're ready to uh, look into replacing the springs for the VPI HW19, which you can see here, I've pulled them out. They usually sit like so on these little pedestals that are installed like so. So, that's the springs that come with the HW19. As time has moved on, I believe the, the springs have kind of fallen out of favor, and now it's uh, on to using new materials for uh, securing the uh, plinth in the frame of the HW19. Uh, this is where you can be fairly creative. I examined a number of materials, um, including things from uh, Herbie's mats, and other uh, materials. Uh, one I found from um, uh, Hudson Hi-Fi. You can get on, on Amazon a little footer. It's kind of a rubberized footer, pretty, pretty stiff. I used that in my previous HW19 upgrade and it uh, worked very well. I actually used a, a Herbie's footer that seemed to be very similar. These Hudson Hi-Fi items are a bit less expensive and seem to be fairly similar. So that's one way of doing it. The key thing is that you've got to um, have a, a stack height uh, of about a one and three eighths to one and a half inches in order for the uh, top of the plinth to be at about the right height for the um, turntable because you've got to take in consideration the height of the uh, motor and also and the spindle here although this is i think adjustable in, in height and and then the platter and where the belt will sit on the platter so you're kind of in the inch and three eighths to uh, inch and a half kind of range uh, for what you come up with um, i think you could be very creative here i, I use the principle of um, using dissimilar materials next to each other think on the theory that that would um, uh, lessen vibration ultimately from uh, getting through and uh, there's a lot of materials that one can use i also decided this time around to um, try to utilize the, some of the existing components already in the um, hw19 so i'm going to remain with the uh, pillars intact. I had taken these out, but I decided to go back and put them back in. They're easily removed. Um, there's a, these uh, wood uh, connections here. These can be removed if you uh, need to. And so I came up with a um, design I think is going to work pretty well, and I'm, I'm, I'm kind of liking the uh, look. And it meets my um, re requirements for 
uh, being about, um, as you can see here, about an inch. This one me measures about an inch and three eighths there, which I think is going to be just perfect for my testing. And basically what I have here is a sandwich. I have the, uh, the pillar here goes back in there like so. And then I purchased these uh, sorbethane um, rings that actually had a cutout, which was good because this screw is kind of a, a bit of a nuisance here since it sits on top there, you can't put something flat on it. So this allows me to deal with that. Uh, these are called isolated uh, sorbethane rings. They are available on Amazon and in various uh, sizes. I think this outlet is about an inch and a half approximately. And then the next item I, I put on was the uh, these um, the cold, let's see here, anti-slip furniture pads. And these are again were something I got on Amazon and they're kind of a felt rubberized material and I think that's good because that kind of gives you another, another kind of uh, different type of material. And so uh, we're going to sandwich all that together like so. Kind of try to center things up as best as possible. It's not too critical. And you can see that's got a bit, a bit, a bit of a, a give to, to it, but um, not too much. And then on top is the uh, what came with the original HW19. This was the top on the springs. And he has these little kind of ball kind of contacts at the top which uh, further provide very uh, limited isolation there um, for the top of the plinth. And I think that's good. It also kind of aids in moving the plinth around when you're trying to get it all uh, evened out equally all over the uh, top. So that's the uh, design I've come up with this time. I, I, again, I think you can be very creative. If you have other ideas about materials and what you can do, uh, you know, give it a go. I, I don't think there's any one right answer. This is the uh, one I'm going to go with on this design, and we'll see how it goes, see how it holds up and if it works. But my initial testing uh, seems to be uh, positive. So I'll go ahead and just install this real quickly to show you how that goes together. So we can go ahead and uh, screw this in down here. Move this a bit here so you can see it a little bit better. There we go. Kind of screw this on down there and maybe use a Phillips head screwdriver to cinch it on down. And then it's just a matter of stacking the components Go ahead and put this on. It'll fit nicely around the uh, the screw head there. And then I've uh, this has a sticky surface on one end, so I stuck the top there to that. So then it's just a matter of uh, putting this down on top of the the uh, sorbethane there. And that's essentially your top. So we'll go ahead and just uh, add these back on to each of the locations like so, right there. And we'll uh, add this one over here as well. And then finally the bottom one here. Get that lined up and locate that over here. And there we have it. So we have the uh, spring replacements in place and uh, we're looking pretty good. So now what we can do is go ahead and uh, put the plinth back on and see how that looks. Go ahead and uh, lay that down carefully on top. There we go. And I've got the arm board here. And we can um, take a look at that, put that in place, see what we've got going there. And so now we basically have the top uh, back on and we can do a quick check on the uh, leveling there and uh, we're pretty spot on it looks like, more or less, so not too bad, maybe a little adjustment, but I'm not too uh, concerned. And then I can go ahead and measure here and um, we're looking, we're about, uh, let's, see, let's see here, say 
you've had seven millimeters, approximately seven millimeters from the top lip of the uh, frame to the plinth, which I think is going to be pretty good. As I said, the, uh, the critical factor here at this point is then how is the um, platter going to sit with regard to the motor and the pulley here for the belt to ride correctly. So to do, to do a check on that, we can go ahead and uh, give a check there here. Let me get uh, a washer here that I have to uh, do a test with. All right, we're just doing this on the fly here, but that's what it's all about. So I'm going to put a, this is going to kind of simulate the uh, height of the um, bearing and the uh, new platter. This is the new platter that I'm going to be using. And it's a little tricky just to see if we can get this balanced properly on that. Yeah, I think that's pretty well balanced. And if I'm looking here, it looks like I'm lined up with the second uh, from the top row for the um, 33 and a third pulley mark here. I think that's going to be pretty good, at least as a starting point for that. So that's kind of uh, what we're looking at. And I think this is going to be a good, good, uh, good starting point. And we'll see that there is some adjustability, I believe, when I install the new uh, bearing. I can adjust, do some adjustment there if necessary. But I think that's about it. That's uh, going to be it now. I've got the uh, plinth um, secured. I've got the motor housing uh, dampened now. And we're going to be on to uh, putting in the new bearing and then putting in the new uh, tone arm, which will be very exciting. So that's it for this uh, portion of the upgrade. So there you have it. Um, a couple more um, steps in the ultimate upgrade of the VPI HW19 turntable. We've now uh, moved to dampening the uh, motor. We've got the spring replacements in uh, place. And uh, we're moving quickly to the culmination of getting this turntable back up and running. In the next episode, we'll be pursuing the... Um, bearing and platter upgrade that uh, I have uh, purchased. And uh, depending on my mood, we may even uh, move right into the uh, tone arm installation as well, or that might be a follow on video if necessary. So stay tuned to this continuing series. And I do appreciate you uh, staying tuned and uh, subscribing and liking this uh, video series and this channel. We're uh, closing in on a thousand uh, subscribers, which is one of the magic numbers here at uh, YouTube. And I do appreciate it. Uh, check out the information down below for uh, some freebies and also links to more information about the topics in this video. And I do thank you for tuning in. This again is Chris Barker for DIY Hi-Fi Life, signing out.